Welcome back to Taxes Made Simple. I'm your host, Carlton Dennis. And in today's video, I want to cover the five most important things to focus on as a new business owner. I speak with a ton of new business owners on a daily basis. And many of new business owners have the similar questions that I see come up. Carlton, how much should I be paying myself? Does it make sense to start out as an LLC or should I stay a sole proprietorship? Should I consider an S corporation early on? What type of items can I deduct for my business? Is things different for my business than some other person's business that I'm seeing online? I wanna be able to answer those questions for you and be able to give you the things that would make the best sense to focus on as a new business owner. So let's dive in. All right, guys, first thing I wanna say is I'm glad that you're here. If you're a new business owner that's been following my channel for a while, welcome on back. But if you're new to my channel, I wanna say thank you for being here. Take it upon yourself to subscribe to this channel and dive through some of the videos that are gonna teach you about LLCs, tax education, and how to take basic deductions. That's what this channel is for, a place where you can learn taxes in a simple place. But what I wanna to do today is I wanna to speak to new business owners. I wanna more importantly speak to business owners who are trying to figure out if it makes sense to hire a tax professional or a tax strategist like myself. Many business owners are on the cusp of starting something really great and they have a lot of questions and they are trying to decide if it makes best sense to invest in setting up a consultation with a tax firm or with a tax strategist. Maybe these questions could be answered in some of the videos I have, or maybe it could be answered today just by understanding what you need to focus on as a small based business owner. So I plan to solve that for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna solve the five most important things that every business owner should be focused on within the first six months of being in business. I'm gonna put it in order for you. And it's my order that I feel is important that I would want someone to share to me. But let's dive in. Now, part of the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is because I've seen business owners who've started out with literally negative dollars. I'm talking about they're in the hole. They're putting in their own personal income. They've already maxed out some credit cards to get their business started and they're not profitable yet. And I've seen some business owners who've dug themselves out of holes and are now making six and seven figures. I have literally seen it all. I've seen the people that have said, Carlton, I started out homeless and now they're rocking the Rolls Royce. And I have clients who have started out already successful and have figured out a way to just completely tank their businesses. You don't wanna be the client that is tanking their business because you didn't have the right information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're starting out our business strong and on the right foot. The number one thing that we should be focused on as new business owners is income first, not structure. That's correct. As a new business owner, you should be more concerned with making income, not your structure. There is no one who is better at making income in your business than you, business owner. And there is no one who is better at structuring your business than someone else other than you. So rather than making the focus early on in your business to be about setting up the correct entity structure, your focus early on in business should be about becoming an income producing business. That means establishing marketing and sales processes that are gonna allow for you to eat and be fed and the people around you that you plan to hire to be eat and to be fed. Because once you solve this income problem, next comes the tax problem. And that's when we start to look at the structure. But too many business owners get analysis paralysis by spending time on Google and Wikipedia trying to figure out if they need to set up an LLC, an S Corp, a parent company, a Wyoming company, Nevada, Delaware, if they need to move to Costa Rica. If you're trying to become successful, you will not spend time on trying to figure out your structure initially, and you'll first focus on trying to become a real business. A real business has systems and process. A real business has income and cash flow coming in. And once you establish income and cash flow, the next problem to solve is number two, establishing your structure. This is one of the most important things that I look to solve for the everyday business owner on my YouTube channel. Why? Because many business owners cut past step number one and already want to jump to step number two of Carlton, what should I be? Or they're speaking with their CPA and their CPA doesn't tell them what structure that they should have been. And so they go on Google and try to figure out, okay, how do I avoid taxes? And they find out that they should have been in a different structure. This is once you have become income producing. That's the type of taxpayer that goes to the internet to figure out what type of structure they should be. And once you do become income producing, you're going to want to move on to step number two. What type of structure are you gonna be? Does it make sense for you to be a sole proprietorship? Most business owners start out as sole proprietorships, but why am I not a fan of them? I personally have never liked sole proprietorships. Part of the reason why is because when I think about how many IRS audits I've seen, the majority of them have been with Schedule C sole proprietor businesses. Business owners who file tax returns in the same tax return with their personal income. That means everything's all in one place. 
So if the IRS audits you, they are auditing your personal return and your business return, and they have access to see everything. Not to mention, when you're filing a tax return that's a Schedule C, a Schedule C shows me all your income and all your expenses all broken down nice and neat for me, so I can see if anything looks out of the ordinary if I'm, if I'm an IRS auditor. So sole proprietors are definitely under higher IRS scrutiny just for the simple fact of the way that they file their tax returns. Not to mention, if I'm a sole proprietor, I'm considered a disregarded entity. For IRS purposes, they don't even view me as a legal entity structure. I'm considered disregarded, still a business, but I'm disregarded. Doesn't sound right. Doesn't feel right, actually. But when I'm a disregarded entity, I don't have liability protection. In the event that something happens, I am personally liable for the debts and liabilities inside of my business. And that is one of the biggest turnoffs to me about being a sole proprietorship. Why would I want to be personally liable if something detrimental happens? I'm trying to make an impact and a difference in this world. And if something goes south, I have to be personally impacted for everything. Maybe you want to layer protection. And that's when you'll look to setting up an LLC or some type of entity structure. But then, of course, the questions start to arise. Do I need an LLC? What's a PLLC, a professional LLC? Is that something that I'm going to need? Are there steps to set up an LLC that I should know about? Or should I just pay one of these companies online and trust that they're doing it right? And am I supposed to have something written down around what I'm doing for my company inside of my operating agreement? Snap, maybe I should hire an attorney to set all this up. But wait a minute, how much is it gonna cost me to hire an attorney? I heard they cost a lot and they charge by the hour. Maybe I should call a tax professional for, wait a second, let me go to Google. Now I'm on YouTube and now I'm on a, a video of Carlton's. That's the order of operations I see all the time, guys. And don't fault me if I'm if I'm quoting what you're taking, the steps that you're absolutely taking right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no class on LLCs in college. I didn't take one. I personally did not take a class on whether or not I should have an LLC or not in, in, in college or in high school. OK, so welcome to Tax Alchemy University. Welcome to Carlton Dennis's page. And now you're learning a little bit more about why these questions are arising in your head. These are questions that every other taxpayer is having, too do i need to establish an llc well you're solving one thing you're solving something that the sole proprietor couldn't solve you're establishing liability protection but you're still filing tax returns just like a sole proprietor if you have a single member llc everything gets filed inside of your individual tax return everything is shown in the event of an irs audit all on the personal tax returns so then you might be thinking okay well then should i set up a partnership well are you in partnership because if you're not in partnership you can't have a partnership if you're not in partnership right so this is when we start to look at the s corporation you'll see on my channel i talk all about s corporations when to switch to an s corp how much you should pay yourself as an s corp what's reasonable compensation because the s corporation is the correct entity structure if you have ordinary income and you're making over a certain amount of money to where you can draw a payroll you can pay yourself out of your own business that's when you start to save money on taxes that's when you start to get a deduction for paying yourself. So the second most important thing for all business owners to focus on after they figured out how to make income is how to structure themselves correctly. Sole proprietorship to LLC to S corporation, C corporation normally comes last unless you are trying to go public and you're raising capital from the start. That is exactly how I have seen other business owners have had success. If you're going to be a publicly traded company, you're going to be a C corporation. Doesn't mean you have to start off as a C corp, not necessarily, but maybe you want to. OK, but just knowing this information right now about structures, sole proprietorship, LLC, S corporation, C corp gives you the direction you need when you're starting out. The third most important thing that business owners need to focus on early on in business is their tracking system. What does that mean? You need to have a system to account for income coming into your business and expenses coming back out of your business. I don't know how you're currently tracking your income and expenses, but most of the time when taxpayers get on the phone with me, they try to act like they have already been tracking their income and expenses in some type of program. I could hear the ones who are doing it correctly because they can rattle off numbers to me very quickly. Oh yeah, this is how much I made net income. This is how much I grossed. And then I can hear the ones that are trying to tell me that they've been tracking stuff. I think I did. I think I made around I don't like a, a whole lot of thinking going on when I'm on the phone with people I like certainty because you want to know certainly how much money I can save you when you're on the phone with me. Believe me, 
When you get on the phone with me, you're going to want to know by the time you get off how much I can save you. Why would you give me numbers that are ballparks? Wouldn't you rather have the exact numbers? Wouldn't you be able to make decisions in real time if you had exact numbers? Because in the game of taxes, you can miss out on a deduction by a dollar. You can miss out on a tax credit by a dollar because you weren't on your mark. You weren't on top of your numbers. You didn't have a profit and loss statement. What is a profit and loss statement? Welcome to the bookkeeping game. Now we have to understand what is bookkeeping. Carlton, do I need a bookkeeper? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're a taxpayer that has the time to track your income that comes into your bank account and the expenses that are coming out of your bank account. Maybe you've taken it upon yourself to look at the tax form called a Schedule C to see the categories of expenses that the government has for you, such as advertising, licensing, rents, legal, professional fees, auto, gas. These are all expenses that you will find on a Schedule C or on any profit or loss statement when you decide to do your bookkeeping. So the next thing that you have to do as a taxpayer is establish a tracking system to track the, ex the income that comes into your business and the expenses that you're occurring so you can categorize the expenses according to what the expense is. Something that's marketing for your business may not be marketing for my business. So it's up to you to make sure you learn how to track your expenses and how to categorize your expenses according to what it is. That is the most important thing. QuickBooks and programs like QuickBooks will help you with income and expense tracking. It'll allow for you to populate all your income and all your expenses by attaching your bank account and then your transactions populate into the program. And then it's up to you to categorize those transactions and to create rules so you don't have to come back next month and recategorize the same type of transactions again. If you're going to Starbucks and that's a meal for you, you should create that rule so every time you spend money at Starbucks, it automatically counts it as a meal. The most important thing that you can do, number three, is establishing your tracking system so that you can make decisions in real time and so that you're not living in fear of filing your tax returns. The number four thing that you need to establish is establishing how much money you need to save as a business owner. Woo! This is one that I feel like business owners do last because business owners are in a place where they earn income first, spend money second, and pay taxes third, which is a great thing by being a business owner because a W-2 taxpayer earns money, pays tax taxes second, and then gets to spend whatever's left third. That's the difference between taxpayers who are W-2 versus 1099. 1099 taxpayers have time which means they can leverage expenses. But if you're just spending money because you're a business owner and you think it's okay to just spend money, you're going to hurt yourself in the long run. Trust me, I have been there, business owner. I want you to know how to do this the right way. The right way is to not spend money until you know exactly how much you can spend personally. How are you gonna know that? Well, you first need to have an estimate of how much you're expected to make for the year. Can you ballpark it? Can you get close enough to ballparking or can you run the numbers based on the income you've already earned from January, February, March, April, and quantify out with the remaining months in the year what your estimated income is going to look like? That's a number that's so important to a tax strategist and it's a number that should be important to a business owner because that number can let you know exactly how much you're expected to owe, exactly how much you might even be expected back in a refund if you're making estimated tax payments. But if you know how much you are going to make, then you can do math to figure out how much you're going to owe. From there, you can now decide how much money do I want to set aside for reinvesting? How much money do I want to set aside for taxes? And how much money do I want to set aside to pay moi, myself? That is the order of operations that we need to take as taxpayers and as business owners who are trying to be savvy. We cannot just spend money because there's money in the business bank account. It does not work like that, guys, if you're trying to be successful. Trust me, I see the business owners who don't worry and I see the business owners who stress out. The ones who stress out just are just trying to spend money. The ones who don't worry have a plan on how to spend the money. That's simple. The last thing that I can leave you is number five. And I put this strategically as the last one. Formulate a tax plan. After you have gone through the steps of, de of becoming an income producing business, after you've gone through the steps of figuring out what entity to structure yourself in, after you have gone through the steps of forming your tracking system, after you've gone through the steps of figuring out how much money you should be saving and how much you should be putting aside for reinvesting and paying yourself, you're at a place where you can have some fun now with the tax code because you know things. Your money's good. 
tracking is good. I don't have to worry about becoming my own bookkeeper. I already have my bookkeeping dialed or I've outsourced it. I have my business bank accounts established. I have my entity structure. I have my liability protection and I know how much I'm saving and how much I'm keeping. Now I can play the tax game. Now I'm in a place where I can leverage tax strategies. Now I can put the home office into play. Now I can leverage the vehicle deduction. Now I can think about setting up retirement planning for myself. Now I might even think about a management company or a parent company. Now I might think about the Augusta rule that Carlton talks about so much on here. Now you can start to have fun. But if you haven't covered one through four, you're not gonna be able to get to number five, which is the phone call with the tax strategist where you're having fun leveraging the tax code to the fullest extent. Who wouldn't wanna be on the phone leveraging the tax code to the fullest extent, learning how to write off all these different things that they weren't able to write off? Of course you wanna be there. Have you handled one through four yet? I'm here to help you. My name is Carlton Dennis. You're on my channel right now. Love you to do something for me. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm here to help. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video where I will help you grow your wealth. See you soon.